Hey Calvary family, I'm Pastor Sean and I have the honor of bringing you today's word for the day. Something I admire a lot about Calvary is our ability to be transparent. It's one of our strongest attributes and it allows us to reach our community with truth and sincerity like no one else. But no matter what, there always seems to be the temptation of putting on a mask. And here's what I mean. It's not easy to live transparent all the time, especially when we feel shame or guilt around the truth, like if we're stuck in sin. Our proverb today is a reminder. It's a reminder for all of us that transparency and our truth leads to the amazing life change Jesus has for us. And we need to take our shame and our guilt, which are valid emotions, just emotions used poorly, and we need to take them and give them to God. Because the outcome is too important not to. So our proverb, chapter 28, verse 13 says this, whoever conceals their sins does not prosper but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Confess and renounce. Like we said earlier, it's very tempting not to be transparent, but I hope we can agree that transparency and confession are two things that lead to life change. Even if we don't see that positive change in the moment, it's there. And if God tells us to do something, we can trust that he'll be in the process from the start to finish. He's not gonna make you rip open your soul and expect you to deal with it all on your own. So if you struggle with concealing your sin and you somehow convinced yourself falsely that you don't need to be honest anymore, maybe because you don't wanna hurt someone with your sin or some other false thinking, I think you should reconsider. Sin is not something that we should justify having in our life like a friend. No, sin is something we should define as the enemy. And would you invite someone who wanted to murder your family to a Thanksgiving dinner? Hopefully not. But we have wrongly assumed that sin is something we can conceal in our lives and it'll all just be okay. The truth is, that's not how this works. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. You believing that you can continue to live with the sin in your life is a lie from the deepest pits of hell. God does not want you to live with an anchor attached to your foot. Jesus came to give us life to the full. You can't frolic in fields with an anchor on your foot. That's just weird. But if you pray about it, and when you finally start listening to the Holy Spirit's conviction in your life, let's start moving towards confessing your sin. That way, it loses its power over you and you can continue living life to the fullest. The truth is, no, sin and the temptation to sin will never go away until Jesus, until Jesus comes back, that is. But God made a way out of temptation and out of sin. And it's time for you to take that opportunity. So if you're ready, I have three tips for confession. Number one, Start small, but start with the most powerful. Start by confessing your sin to God. Get alone in your room, get on your knees and talk with your heavenly father. Tell him the sin that you can't seem to get away from. No one cares more about this than him. And the truth of the matter is, any sin we have in our lives is actually against God first and foremost. So talk to him. He's already expressed a desire to forgive you by sending his son Jesus Christ to die for you and remove those sins from you. Number two, when you're ready to tell a trusted friend, take them out to coffee and believe the word of God that tells us when we confess to one another and pray for one another, we are healed. And what are we healed from? The damage that sin does in our life. And it doesn't mean that there won't be consequences, but a damaged bone won't heal if you keep breaking it every day. But sometimes, allowing a doctor to re-break it once and then put it into a cast, the bone can then heal properly. Our life needs to heal properly, and it can't do it with that concealed sin. The third and final thing is this. If you feel you've sinned against somebody in lust or anger, envy, malice, or whatever, with the Lord's leading and in the Lord's timing, confess that sin to that person. That may be the hardest thing you ever do, but if you want to feel what it's like to live wildly free, confess. I love the quote that says, the freest man in the room is the one with nothing to hide. And that's true. As I close, I just want you to know that I speak from experience. I myself concealed sin for a long time and it blew up on me. 
I'll tell you what, if, if you see me and are interested in the story, I have no shame in telling you how I let concealed sin rot me from the inside out. And even worse than that, I was found out. I didn't even have the opportunity to, to confess. I was discovered and it was messy. I think that's Pastor Chad saying that it's better to confess than to be found out. Probably because all things done in the dark will eventually be brought to the light, one way or another. And the truth is this, I don't want anyone to be trapped in concealing their sins, their hurts, their shame, and their guilt. Instead, I want every one of you to feel the absolute freedom I felt by coming clean. And with that, Calvary, have a good day. Talk to your Father in heaven. I'll talk to you later.